Former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has passed away at the age of 86. Self-described as the Jesus Christ of politics, his legacy is complicated to say the least. On the international stage, he tried to play the role of statesman, happy to be friends with all and forced to try and steer Italy through what was a disastrous Euro crisis. Well, tonight we ask, how do we assess Silvio Berlusconi's legacy in Italy and beyond? Let's kick this part of the show off with Barbie Nardo, who has this reflection. The Jesus Christ of politics, the best political leader in Europe and the world. That is how Silvio Berlusconi once described himself. And without a doubt, he was a powerful political operator and businessman who sparked more than one scandal. And despite a string of legal trouble and dubious friends, Berlusconi always managed to bounce back. Mi ha troppo emozionato. He made his name as a business tycoon. He owned the famous AC Milan football club for 31 years. At one point, he was the richest man in Italy. I have always been adored by those who have worked with me. First elected as prime minister in 1994, he was quickly removed when his coalition partners pulled out. But he was elected to the top job twice more in 2001 and 2008, becoming Italy's longest serving prime minister since World War II. And voters brought him back to power in 2022 as a coalition partner with Giorgia Meloni and Matteo Salvini. Charming and with a flippant sense of humor, Berlusconi's off-the-cuff remarks and missteps with protocol were often criticized. He welcomed the newly elected U.S. president in 2008 by complimenting Barack Obama on his, quote, suntan and left German Chancellor Angela Merkel waiting during a NATO summit. And his close friendship with Vladimir Putin got him in hot water after he disclosed he had re-established his friendship with the Russian president in late 2022, after Putin sent him 20 bottles of Russian vodka for his birthday. He later blamed Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky for starting the war, putting him at odds with Meloni. The prime minister often surrounded himself with beautiful women. Allegations of a relationship with an 18-year-old aspiring model, which he strenuously denied, triggered a painfully public divorce. And revelations about his so-called bunga bunga parties landed him in court on charges of abuse of power and having sex with an underage prostitute. Allegations he also denied. It is absurd to think that I have paid to have rapport with a woman. Meanwhile, the Eurozone was going through a financial crisis. Italy was hit hard and the government's debt ballooned to 120% of the GDP in August 2011. The Italian Prime Minister promised to crack down on tax evasion and introduce other austerity measures, but it was not enough. Berlusconi lost his majority in Parliament and was forced to resign as Prime Minister in November 2011. In 2012, he was convicted of corporate tax fraud and banned from public office. Months later, an Italian court found Berlusconi guilty on the charges stemming from the Bunga Bunga parties. An appeals court later overturned the conviction. He was voted out of parliament in 2013. Two years later, convicted of bribing a senator a decade before, but never served time since a statute of limitations timed out in the same year. Io sono Innocente. At the age of 82, Berlusconi managed another comeback. He led his Forza Italia party in the European elections and won a seat in Parliament. A month before he turned 86, he led his party back to power as the junior partner of the current ruling coalition. In the summer of 2020, a few weeks away from turning 84 years old, Berlusconi was struck by COVID-19 and was hospitalized for 12 days. He called that experience the most dangerous test of my life and boasted to journalists that his viral load entity of the virus was the highest one amongst tens of thousands. Few could match the one and only Silvio Berlusconi. And even though the, quote, Teflon Don, as he was known, was in and out of the hospital in his later years, he always managed to look remarkably younger than his years. 
Well, Bobby Nadeau joining me now live from Rome. And I know that you've interviewed Berlusconi in the past. What was your impression of him? Well, you know, I interviewed him, this was for print, it was outside of the cameras in 2001 and again in 2006 uh, for print articles. And he was a different man off camera than he was on camera. He was smart. He wasn't this sort of clown. He wasn't the caricature that I think he very much liked to have portrayed about himself. And I always felt, you know, that he, there was a li little bit of that was kind of a cover to, to sort of be the entertainer. After all, he was an entertainer. He was a cruise ship crew, you know, singer for a short period of time as well. But I think he was a smart man. He was well studied. He understood things. He wasn't a great leader. Everyone says, you know, he was a great politician, but not such a good leader. He didn't do the best for Italy. That's obviously uh, demonstrable in terms of the way the economy was going and things like that. Um, but his, you know, he's very much a part of the the, the post-war Italy on so many levels. He had control of the television networks, the first first private television networks. He introduced the American sitcom, you know, Dallas, and some of these shows to the Italian audience. He made people want to be wealthy. You know, he he was a, a really a big part of Italian history and a part of Italy as it is today. I think very much is reflected in who Berlusconi was during those years that he was a leader, Becky. Bobby, thank you. Well, I want to take you through some of the international reaction to the death of Silvio Berlusconi. He reported earlier, the European Parliament president describing him as a fighter who led the centre right and was the protagonist of politics in Italy and in Europe for generations. The German government tweeting, quote, we've learned today of the death of former Italian Prime Minister Berlusconi. We express our condolences to the Italian people and government. And Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte, for example, offered this tribute. With the death of Silvio Berlusconi, Italy has lost a strong personality. He was the first Italian Prime Minister I worked with, and I will remember him as a striking and passionate politician. Interesting choice of words. My next guest is a senior policy fellow and the head of the Rome office for the European Council on Foreign Relations, Arturo Varvelli, is an expert on Italian foreign policy with insight uh, on Berlusconi's lasting impact, particularly here in this region where I'm broadcasting uh, to you from uh, the Gulf. And so let's uh, bring him in. He joins me from Skype tonight. And we've heard some kind words from Italy's neighbours, Russia's uh, President Vladimir Putin, uh, adding to the chorus, calling Berlusconi a wise and dear friend, Arturo. And there's no doubt he will be remembered fondly uh, by many. What do you believe his lasting legacy will be? Let's start on the international stage. Uh, yeah, in, in an era where rather traditional leaders still, still predominated, Berlusconi was one of the first world leaders to change the style of approach to foreign policy, to build international relations based on personal mutual trust. Berlusconi based his foreign policy on his capacity as a success businessman. No? He did it is both with traditional allies, the Europeans, the Americans, etc., and by building particular friendship with regional and global power outside the Atlantic Alliance, from Gaddafi to Erdogan to Putin. One of his greatest success, for example, was the inclusion of Russia, because you are talking about Putin, in, in the, Russia, the inclusion of Russia in, in the G7, transforming it into the G8, because he worked a lot for this. Berlusconi also worked to establish a sort of structural dialogue between the Atlantic Alliance and Russia. Uh, those were different times, the end of the 90s, the beginning of, 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 of uh, 20s, in, in, in which it was still believed that the full inclusion of Moscow in the Western international system was, uh, was, was possible. Uh, in reality, this Italian policy has not deviated much from the traditional Italian policy, that of acting as a bridge between, between the West and the other external uh, actors, but he did it with his hound style, something sometimes unconventional, very informal, uh, a style that, that, that prevailed throughout the West, if we think of Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, but also Sarkozy or Macron.